Okay, friends, we're back and we're talking all about a big, a big thing today. We're going to address shame. And I was really, Alana and I were like talking back and forth, like we, we weren't hard and set on something that we were going to talk about this week. And we were each praying about it. And then it just hit me so hard. And I was like, okay, God, like you gave me the word and we're talking on shame. So that's this today. And I wanted to say, Coming into this topic, I know there can be trigger points, uh, and I wanted to say that. For me, opening up about shame and guilt sexually has been a huge part of my story um, because this was a hard thing for me to wrap my mind around and gain freedom in because we, Neil and I in our past, we shared a little bit about this, we you know, we didn't have hard set boundaries. I was so young and I didn't have clarity on things. And you guys know we didn't have accountability partners either. So I felt like I struggled a lot, which meant I packed on shame and guilt because I felt super lost. So I want to let you guys know that we're talking about this thing and this has been a huge part of my story. So I hope that you guys can relate to this and that we can connect through this and um, live out, you know, walking through bondage into freedom together. Yeah. I'm excited to tackle this as well. I feel like it's something that maybe people have in their lives and don't even realize, which is kind of the case for me. Yes. Um, I didn't realize that I was carrying shame for things that Mm -hmm. like Steph and I had crossed. And then when I would think about it after when we were married, it was like, oh, like, Ooh, I still feel kind of guilty about that. Yeah. And, like, you know, mm-hmm. and I think there's a part of it where it's like, yes, you have remorse for things that you've like boundaries you've crossed, but at the same time, trusting that, no, wait, I shouldn't be feeling this right now. So, yes. I'm excited to talk about it. That's good. Me too. I'm so glad you, you shared that. So uh, we have some uh, topics that we're going to work through here. So we kind of divvied this up and we're tackling shame on different levels. So the first one that we want to address is what do we do and how do we go about dealing with shame that comes from our past, okay? So dealing with the past guilt and past shame of anything to do with sexuality in our past, okay? So... There is something that was super profound to me that I heard once upon a time. And it was that us as women have a tendency to allow our feelings to dictate our truths instead of God's word and his redeeming love to determine our freedom. I want you guys to sit with that for a second. (laughs) That was huge for me. Our feelings, although they're, they're truly incredible, like... I love how God made us, but we often as women will accredit our feelings before reality or truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does God's Mm -hmm. truth say? And so that will often be the voice that's overruling our lives in certain areas, keeping us from freedom. So we're talking about shame here. If we feel shameful, we accept that as our truth. We allow Mm. it to dictate us because it feels more true than God's word over us. Yikes. That's really good. Right. I, I know that was, that was pivotal for me. That was pivotal. When I heard that, I was just like, whoa, 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 stop the car. Like I need to revisit that (laughs) sentence Mm -hmm. probably seven more times and let that sink in. Like, wow. We often will let our feelings dictate our truth over God's truths because it feels more real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a good reminder to think about like, thoughts you have and you're like, wait, is this my thought? Is this my feeling? Or is this what God says about me? Exactly. Cause we will just turn to labeling ourselves immediately. Right. Because mm-hmm. of the feelings and when have we ever been okay with labeling? Like never, yeah. nobody likes labeling. So why do we subject ourselves to allowing us to put the labels on ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So why do we do that to ourselves? We tell ourselves, okay, I can't enjoy sex because of the partners I had before I met my husband. I can't be free sexually because of all the shame I carry from past choices. I can't allow myself to feel pleasure because sex is dirty, because of past mentalities or past, you know, unfortunate experience that I've gone through. And it's the, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You guys, Mm -hmm. that's labeling. That is totally doing yourself a huge disservice 
to be completely honest Mm -hmm. because those are untruthful labels. And we want to talk about seeking God's truth over our lives. That's why we're here. We're here because we need redemption. We need to hear these truths. You guys, we've talked about how tainted sex is Mm -hmm. in our culture. It's so tainted. And we all take some kind of taint into our marriage. Like all of us, all of us. There's stuff that we discover and learn through the journey, right? And is doing ourselves a disservice when we're allowing these to speak truths over us, right? So subjecting ourselves to the feelings of truths, you know, accepting that shame's okay, accepting that guilt is okay, and, and going forth into your marriage that way, going forth into intimacy that way, and, and not being truly free, that's bondage, right? Like, exactly. we can agree. I think we can all agree that, right? That's yeah. bondage that we've subjected ourselves to. And you guys, I'm not... A lot of us don't even realize it. Alana, you just shared that. Like, a lot yeah. of us don't even realize it. And we sit down and we break it down. We're like, okay, actually, yeah, I do feel shame from X, Y, and Z, that happened, you know, in my past and I can see how it's affected my marriage. And oh my gosh, now I can see how I've labeled myself because I validated my feelings instead of God's truth over me. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's really good. And I like how you called it, you called it bondage. It's like, it's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, mm-hmm. it's just holding you back yeah. from, from so much freedom. Yes restraining you. Yeah, from- absolutely. And that's exactly, yeah. I mean, like, let's call it as it is. Like it is restraining. It is bondage. It is nothing to do with anything good. And what does that all point to? That's the enemy just working dang hard on keeping you from your true beauty in Christ, right? From keeping you from blossoming in your marriage, in your marriage bed with your husband. Yeah. I know when we were thinking about this and shame and things like that, um, something that came to mind from like in scripture that I thought was really good and was really applicable here was in John eight. So this is when Jesus is with the Pharisees and they bring in this woman who was caught in adultery Mm -hmm. um, and they were, Mm -hmm. and then Jesus writes something in the sand and says, um, whoever is without sin can cast the first stone. And then, you know, one by one, from oldest to youngest, they all leave, yes. right? Because they were convicted. And uh, mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. talks to the woman mm-hmm. and said, like, where are those who condemn you? It's like, they're gone. And so then Jesus, mm-hmm. like the son of God, Jesus says to the woman who was caught in sexual sin, neither do I condemn you. And then he adds, now leave your life of sin. So I just think yes. like looking at shame from that mindset and, you know, thinking about regardless of what you've done or mm-hmm. where your past has been, where the path of your life has taken you, God can redeem it. And so I just think it was so powerful to hear yes. God say, well, I don't condemn you. Absolutely. Like, you know, like who can cast that first stone? Anyways, I just thought it was so powerful like that God is, like you've said before, in the business of redeeming. And then I think just looking through shame with that perspective as well Mm -hmm. can just be really, really powerful. Yes. And I love that you singled out, you know, where are those that condemn you? And it was just her and Jesus left, you know, and, and then Jesus outright said, I don't condemn you either, but I want to take this a step further even then who's left standing to make mm-hmm. the ultimate choice of freedom? Yeah. It was yeah, her. She's the one who has to and it's us. Yeah, to leave right? that past. And, yeah. It's our choice. Yes, mm-hmm. it's our choice to walk out of bondage. We need to make that committed choice to leave it because it can't, ha- mm-hmm. it can't hold power on us if we say no. You know, we bring it to the foot of the cross and we're like, no more, no more. I cannot, I will not subject myself to shame. That's of the enemy. What does God say? My truth yeah. is that he's called us to be free, right? Mm-hmm. That he's not our condemner. He's our, our healer, right? That's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your past choices were, right? I love so mm-hmm. much with all my heart that that verse is in the Bible, Alana, that passage you just read, because mm-hmm. she was caught in sexual sin. We don't know what it was, but 
I'm pretty sure most of us have yeah. been in, in sexual sin in one way or another, right? It's, it affects us. And it's not, it does not determine our destiny because if that's not God's truth, it's the enemies, it's his lies, right? Regardless of our choices, um, we're the ones that ultimately get to say, okay, shame, guilt, the road yeah. ends here, buddy. Like we're, we're moving on and we're reclaiming truths. And it's nice too, if you think about it in a different sort of perspective, like even though we don't necessarily, you know, um, have Jesus, you know, present in our room with us, you know, physically, but to think about it as like him stooping down to pick you up, take your hand and be like, no, I've got you. You're clean now. You're covered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I just, it's such a beautiful mental picture for me. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Yes. I love that. So Alana and I want to leave a challenge for you guys for this portion, um, on, dealing with past guilt and shame. So here's what we want you guys to do. This is something you struggle with and you deal with. I want you guys to write out your feelings of shame, what you've accepted as your truth. Remember going back to feelings and God's truth. Get clear with yourself there and put it all out there. Um, And then go to prayer. Go to prayer and bring it to the foot of the cross and you're going to leave it there. I want you to go there with that intention that you're bringing this You're giving it up Mm. because God has literally died to cover us so that we don't carry that because he knows it's too much for us. It is. I mean, what does it feel like living in bondage? It's, it feels like you're doing the impossible because we're not meant to do that. We're not, we're not meant to carry that kind of baggage. So after you pray that over and you go in with that mentality, Alana and I want to challenge you guys to verbally speak out loud verses over yourselves daily so that these words of God become your truth. You're claiming God's voice of truth over you until it becomes your mentality and your belief system because what you think and what you say is what you believe and what you live. Okay, so if you need some sort of scripture to read over yourself and speak truth over yourself, um, this would be a really good one, I think, to start. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's Psalms. 32, one to five. And I'm just going to read it for you guys. Cause I think it's really powerful and it's really beautiful. So this is, mm-hmm. um, guess this is David talking in the Psalms. So he says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes. What joy for those who record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like Mm -hmm. water in summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sin to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. My guilt is gone. So I just thought it was really incredible when I was Mm -hmm. thinking about it and that scripture because um, just the fact that it was David writing it um, and that he could declare his freedom so powerfully and, and confidently because there was things in his life that would have probably daily reminded him of his past sins. Um, so if you haven't read that passage of like yeah. scripture in second mm-hmm. Samuel, where it would, it would just be him like sleeping with Bathsheba, getting her knocked up, <laughs> killing off her husband. Um, so if you haven't read that. <laughs> yeah. Like big stuff, you guys <laughs> go read that. <laughs> if you haven't read it lately, um, second Samuel, but anyways, he knew that he was free and this can be real true for you and me as well. Uh, we can't erase our shame by just trying not to think about it or just trying yes. to say positive things mm-hmm. or positive self-talk. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only way to free ourselves from the weight of sin is to mm-hmm. place it on Jesus. And then we can boldly say it as David did. And you Absolutely. forgave me. My sin is gone. My guilt is gone. So I think that's so, so exciting. Yes. Mm-hmm. To know that we have hope. There is never no hope. I've told myself that so many times. <laughs> there is never no hope. We always have the hope of Christ yeah. within us. And I am eternally thankful for that. This is our second point that we're going to get into here on shame. And this is when we have shame that's stemming from bitterness. So we're going to totally tackle this. Um, Alana threw Matthew six fourteen in here, which I really loved. And... It's very important when we're tackling shame and bitterness that we're also 
looking at what forgiveness truly means Mm -hmm. biblically, right? Like, Alana, actually, we had a big conversation today. (laughs) It was good. On forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And, you know, even tackling how how our society can even muddle what forgiveness looks like and what it actually is. And so that was super good. So we're going to share some of that with you guys. But we'll start with Matthew 6, 14. And that says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you as a promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a good reminder to kind of the end of your day, you're crawling into bed, be like, father, like who, who do I need to forgive? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because that's something it's, it's something you should really look at, uh, especially when it's so like clear. If you forgive those who sin you, like sin against you, your heavenly yes. father will forgive you. It's kind of like a first. Absolutely. Then. So first, yes, forgive, and then your father will forgive you. Like, ugh, okay, got to make sure I'm doing that. Because mm. how often, yeah. like, I feel like that's something that's kind of lost in today's culture is if you hurt my mm. feelings or you do something that's offensive to me or, you know, just I feel upset about to be like, hey, you did this, but you know what? I forgive you or, you know, whatever that looks yeah. like, or I said this and I shouldn't have, can you forgive me? I mm-hmm. think it's really kind of a lost, lost art these days. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Humility is in general, yeah. right? Cause that's kind of what it boils down to as well. Yeah. So yeah. Talking forgiveness, like goodness, you guys, this could be a whole <laughs> series yeah. in and of itself. It mm-hmm. honestly could. So like Alana was saying, when it comes to wrongs that were either A, done to us, or B, sexual sins we committed that, or, or even our husbands have committed, you know, and, and we're so hurt and we host deep, deep, deep roots that can totally fester into bitterness. This is not something we want to talk about you guys let's just say it right now this is not an awesome topic no because it, it's revealing the dirt within us right when we're mm-hmm. talking about bitterness we all have it somewhere and it it honestly is just a poison that festers within our hearts and our minds and it bleeds into our marriage i i'm absolutely and convinced of that if we have things that are undealt with mm-hmm. and unforgiveness in our hearts or that stemming from bitterness right um, we need to talk about forgiveness. So Paul tells us plainly that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay. That's Romans 8, 1. He also says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, right? The all things have passed away. Mm-hmm. All things have been made new, mm-hmm. right? Amen to that. Yeah. Second Corinthians five seventeen. So if we continue to condemn ourselves after receiving the grace and forgiveness of Christ, I think we'd all agree that there is a sense in which we are denying the faith and crucifying the son of God afresh. And so when we talk about it that way, that put into perspective for me, how we're really ultimately sinning against God when we choose bitterness and stuffing things down Mm -hmm. instead of bringing it out forthright to the light. Right. No, that's a really good way to think about it. Right. So it's imperative that, when it comes to addressing deep roots of hurt and bitterness and shame, that we're acknowledging the reality of what's taking place, right? We, we were like, okay, yeah, I, I am bitter about this. This has festered into a pool of bitterness. Like, where do I go next? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like we talked about earlier. That's your feelings. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. your feelings. We can't validate our feelings over scripture. Scripture ultimately is the truth. And so we speak God's truth, speak God's truth over that, speak God's truth over the bitterness, not projecting our feelings onto it. Lay it before Christ in absolute faith that he is washing us white as snow, okay? The choice starts now, the redemption starts now, and with that, our sins are forgiven of us. He's created us to live in sexual freedom, you guys, right? And when we're holding on to sexual bitterness, from either something someone's done to us or that we found ourselves in the situation of that's not freedom. And and we're called to that. I mean, if you guys have read the, the, I loved Song of Solomon. I love that book. I read it often. And there's a couple pastors that have done incredible series on the book. And it, it's so amazing. 
And the whole reoccurring theme, you guys, is that God totally made us to be free in our sexuality with our spouse. Mm -hmm. And that is so freeing in and of itself, right? So it is our blessed choice and duty to accept Christ's forgiveness over us when we're seeking freedom from heavy burdens. But we have to make the choice. If we are bitter, it's because we are choosing that, you guys. We're choosing it. We've accepted that to, again, just take bondage over us, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's not okay. That's not what Christ has called you for, you guys. It's, it's absolutely not. And that's something we have to come to terms with ourselves. Be like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I was hurt. I've, I've let this fester into bitterness. I can see how it's affecting so many different things in my life. But um, same thing. You're drawing a hard line. You're saying absolutely not anymore. And you're coming to terms with yourself. Getting humble. Uh, that's, not, that's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Speaking from experience, you guys. Yeah. Um, it's work. It's work, but it is good work to do. Protecting yourself from bitterness from the roots of bitterness ever taking place is going to do so much good for your marriage in the future. Yeah. And it makes me think of too, like, I know there's times it's, it's something I'm working on, but maybe it's kind of my personality to an extent where, but maybe it's probably just something I should work on. Um, where I often, you know, if, if something's happened and I'll think about it and then I'll think about it later and then something else will happen. And that makes that first thing seem even worse. And then yeah. this is all in my head. Right. And so then you're kind of getting mm. a bit, you know, you're, cre- you're having a little bit of those like bitterness things. The roots are starting. Um, but maybe it wasn't even anything. Maybe it was all just perceived, like all just right. stuff I've put in my head. Like it's not mm-hmm. maybe about sexual things or whatever. It's just the daily things, but a great reminder, a verse that often comes to my mind with that happens is, um, Psalm 51, 10, uh, which is like, create in me a pure heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I think that's always something that comes to mind for me when I think of that. And when I'm in the middle of it, it's like, okay, wait, I need to get right in my heart and make sure that yeah, like you're saying before that you're thinking of it and seeing it through God's lens and not your own feelings lens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. We put on rose colored glasses and it changes the game and it's not for the better. Right. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of, you made a good point earlier. Like we're, we're specifically talking woman to woman here. Right. And we're talking about bitterness and stuff. You guys But Alana said, okay, so what if, what if someone's struggling with feelings of bitterness around something that your husband has done sexually in the past. Alana, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I'm really glad you brought that point up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had just thought that um, those were feelings that you would need to vocalize to your husband if you're having those, those struggles, um, you know, and just those feelings in your mind. Um, But ultimately it's up to him to bring those like past sexual sins and struggles to the cross um, he needs to be the one yes. to ask for God's forgiveness and mm-hmm. just remember that it's not your job to rehash and remind him that, oh, like what you did in your teens was crummy or, you know, what you did before you met me, that wasn't very cool or, um, but just pray that yeah. God would help you make things right in your heart. I even pray Psalms mm-hmm. 51, 10, create in me a clean yes. heart, renew a right spirit within me and, um, and just have grace because he probably feels really crummy and crappy for those, how those past actions are now making you feel. Yes. Um, so just understand that if he's asked God for forgiveness, he's forgiven. He is clean. He's a new creation in Christ. And so then just trust yes. that you just need to cover yourself and, and him and go forward with that mindset. Yes. You know what? That segues really beautifully into our, our third and our final topic on shame. And that's what do we do when we have shame feeding us hmm. from present hurts and issues? And you know how we just talked about, you know, maybe there's something presently that you're dealing with that maybe your husband did in the past and you're having a really hard time getting over that. Maybe, like we said before, it feels like you are climbing the mountain of impossible, right? So I want to I wanna challenge you guys to flip the tables, what a blessing it is that we live in the here and now 
that everything we do from now onward is a choice. So we can either choose to live in freedom, free of our hurts, free of, you know, offense, free of past things that could take hold of us, Mm -hmm. um, and living in repentance, or there's obviously the opposite, or we just are subjecting ourselves to be captive to the destruction of unresolved issues, Mm -hmm. right? So Lana, you said so good. You're like, have, have the conversations you need to, there needs to be resolve. There has to be resolve. If you are dealing with present, big, hard, painful issues in the here and now, it's our job to take action unless you're going to allow the bitterness to take over because it's one or the other. When you look at it, it's black or white. It really is. Like what other option is there? There's not. We either bring it to the light and we give Jesus the wheel and we're like, okay, help me through this, God. You need to help me through this. We're going to have these hard conversations when we get to the end of this. Or we stuff it and we allow it to fester and, and that breeds so much, so much more hurt in the end. Like Lani even said, you know, we'll create even more things in our mind yeah. that are conceived notions, yeah. right? Yeah. Totally because they're, they're bred out true. of pain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing that's come to my mind as well is you know, say these feelings of shame and guilt from past choices or, um, you know, past decisions you've made or things like that keep coming up. I think it would be really powerful and and like valuable to also have someone to keep you accountable and just be like, Hey, how are you doing? I'm praying for you. Um, you know, like, how's that going? How are you feeling about it? You know, I feel like that'd be a really great thing if that's something you're really struggling with is to just share that with someone and be like, you know what, I'm, I've prayed about it. Like, can you pray with me? Can you, you know, give me some more perspective and thought on this? Um, I think would be really great too. I love that because if you're serious about something, you make sure it happens, Mm -hmm. right? And so if you're serious about resolving current shame that's stemming from current issues, go the extra mile and get someone that's going to walk through this with you, holding your hand and keeping you accountable because that's huge. I love that you said that. And I think another thing too, like w- w- let's talk about prayer. Like, right. goodness, we, we really underestimate the power that mm-hmm. there is in prayer. I mean, like this is Jesus literally bringing this stuff to the foot of, of God. Like that's, yeah. I don't think in our minuscule human minds we could ever fully comprehend that. No. But yeah. <laughs> but if you just think about that, that literally the God of creation, the king of the world, who has the ultimate say in absolutely everything, he's he wants to hear from us, mm. and he's extended grace, and he's extended forgiveness, and he's extended hope to us. Like, man, you guys, when when we get so caught up in our own heads— that we, we let those things slide, you know, that God's open-handedly offering to us and we get so in our heads and so caught up on, on the pain and the hurt and, and the fear or whatever it is. Like mm-hmm. we dig ourselves deep, deep, deep holes and they're harder to get out of than if we just get nitty gritty and you do the work now, like something's happening now in your marriage. Okay, babe, we got to talk like, yeah. We need to, we need to hash this out now. Right. Yeah. We need to get on our knees now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that goes back to choice, right? Like we need to be so conscious. I love in the scriptures how, you know, God's called us to be very much in the here and now and to be prepared. We're supposed to be prepared and preparing ourselves all the time because we don't know what the next day is going to throw at us, right? And we're here to stand for Christ. We're here in his name as his messengers. Like that's a huge calling. And and God has given us that amazing miracle of making choice. So paired with the victory of his salvation within us, you guys, we cannot fail. <laughs> we cannot fail because God is within us, right? What can man do to me? Mm. And it's a matter of us being able to make that choice, right? Stuff's going on that's stemming from shame and guilt, broken loyalty, whatever it is between you and your husband, or even maybe it's with yourself. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing that's beyond God's redemption, you guys. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So I feel like too, when we, when we feel shame, 
just going mm-hmm. back to just thinking about shame. Um, we often, I think it's human nature to just keep Jesus at an arm's length because yeah. we feel unworthy, right? To be near him when in reality, that's like the only way we can feel cleansed, right? Is to, is to mm. be near him. And so I just think that's another, another thing to just be mindful of as well when you're thinking about it and just thinking about it like he was hanging on the cross and asking God to forgive the people who put him there. Right. And so thinking about yeah. forgiving, like, I feel like there's just like, Jesus is just so included in all of this, um, this shame and well, not mm. obviously not that he feels shame or we feel shame because of him or whatever, but you know what I'm saying? Like we just need to keep him near and just remember that. Okay. If he can forgive people who, nailed him to the cross. You know what? Yeah. Maybe there's stuff that's, it's hard. It's hard to forgive or it's hard to get over it. But this, this bitterness, you know, my husband, this, this really hurt me, you know, this cut me really deep and whatever, but I just feel Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. to just peel back the layers prayerfully and just get to the root of it and be like, you know what? No, you, we need to forgive to go forward. Yeah. I think it's just a really good reminder. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that, that means taking action, right? And like you're talking about moving forward, you're talking about forgiveness. It's choosing to make a difference and committing to changing the outcome of your present situation for the good of your future freedom. Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes, where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys. And we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.